everybody there, BMETs, and welcome back. I hope you guys are all regulating your time properly, as well as maintaining a constant DC, I mean, constant level of positivity, especially after today's rigorous lecture. Today, we learned about Zener voltage regulators and multi stage transistor amplifiers, so I hope you guys are amped to get into today's rewind video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the Zener voltage regulator. Just like the regulator section of a power supply, the purpose is to maintain a constant DC output voltage. In this circuit, we have 18 volts applied, and I'm not going to really get into how we get these voltage readings because we really went over it in class. I'm just going to provide them this time so we can really discuss operation. So we're going to say R1 is dropping 6 volts, which means that Q1 and D1 have to be dropping 12, which places 12 volts on the base of Q2. In this circuit, we replaced RL with a fan, and we're going to put it in medium speed operation. Now look at those electrons go. See that current flow? Now let's talk about our V out. If I have 12 volts on the base, my V out should be 11.4, and I have to add up to the applied voltage, so that means Q2 emitter to collector is dropping 6.6. .6. Also pay attention to that voltage drop across the base emitter junction. It's 0.6 less on the emitter, so across the base emitter junction, it's dropping 0.6 volts. Now, let's kick this thing into high gear and switch it to high speed. To actually increase current flow, I have to decrease the resistance of RL. And look how much more current flow we have now. With more current flowing through Q2, you're going to see the voltage drop emitter to collector go up. And since that went up, we have to bring down our voltage out because we have to add up to the applied voltage. And you're probably wondering, we didn't maintain a constant DC voltage. But wait, there's more. There's a regulation step. Notice what happens to that voltage drop across the base emitter junction. It goes up. And anytime that happens, we increase forward bias. With Q2 conducting more, now its voltage drop is going to decrease, forcing our V out to go back up. Now, let's kick this thing into low speed. Let's, let's increase the resistance of RL. Awesome. Now, look what happens to current flow when we increase the resistance of RL. Look at those little electrons go. There's so much less than what we had on high speed. With less current flowing through Q2, its voltage drop emitter to collector is going to decrease and force our V out to go back up. No bueno. So, look what happens to that voltage drop across the base emitter junction. It decreased, which decreases forward bias of our transistor. When that happens, current flow is gonna decrease or it's gonna resist current flow more and cause its voltage drop to go back up. When this happens, it brings our V out back down where we're supposed to. This circuit basically just works in action and reaction. We have a change in current and our transistor is going to react to bring it back to our constant DC output voltage. Now, let's move on to our next topic, multi-stage transistor amplifiers. Multi-stage transistor amplifiers are used when the gain of one stage or one transistor amplifier is not practical. So we need to increase the voltage gain by connecting each stage or transistor amplifier circuit together. This is a process called cascading, and there are four methods that we talked about in class today. There's one that we go into large detail, the RC coupling, which is a bunch of common emitter transistor amplifiers connected together, and then the other three, LC coupling, transformer coupling, and direct coupling, which we don't really go over much in class. So, like I said, we're bringing in AC to this circuit. Go ahead and just picture this as an RC coupling. So each stage or each transistor amplifier circuit is a common emitter amplifier circuit. So with that coming into stage one, we should see an inverted amplified AC output coming out of stage one. For stage two, we should see another inverted and amplified AC signal. And for the final output of stage three, we should see another inverted amplified AC signal. Now we're talking about voltage gain. So I didn't really give you the AV for each of the stages. So if you're not given it, most stages are built by default to have a gain of 10. Now, how would we figure out the AV total or the final output? The input to stage one amplified how many times to give us the output of stage three? 
Well, to figure that out, we're gonna take the we're gonna take stage one's AV times stage two, and we're gonna, then we're gonna take that and multiply that times stage three, and that should give us an AV total of one thousand. With that being said, now that we've kind of discussed multi-stage transistor amplifiers, let's actually move on to the RC coupling transistor amplifier. So for the RC coupled amplifier, notice that it's three common emitter circuits connected together. Stage one is Q1 and all of its components, Q2 and all of its components for stage two, and Q3 and all of its components for stage three. Now, this wouldn't be an advanced electronics college level class without a little mathematics. So just like you solved on day two for the common emitter amplifier circuit, we need to figure out some voltage readings. So let's start with figuring out the voltage on the base. To do that, we're gonna have to take the 12 volts and divide it by R1 and R2's total resistance. Then multiply that value by R2's value to give you the voltage on the base, which should be 2.4 volts. Now finding the voltage on the emitter is a little easier because we know that that value is just 0.6 less than what's on the base. So you should have 1.8 volts there. Now this part's a little tricky. Pay attention to R4 and R5. To figure out the total current, we have to divide 1.8 by their sum, which in this case is 1.6 kilo ohms. When you do that, it should give you a value of 1.25 milliamps. Now the next part we have to figure out is the voltage drop of the collector resistor R3. To do that, we're gonna take that current or total current and multiply it by R3's value of 2K should give you 2.25 volts. Lastly, and the easiest of all of the calculations is figuring out the voltage on the collector. We're gonna take 12 volts minus that 2.25, and that's gonna give us 9.75 volts on the collector. But before we move on to stage two, don't forget this output coupling capacitor. Remember what they do? They block DC and pass AC. So to figure out the voltage on the base of stage two, I do not want to see that 9.75 volts on the collector of Q1 on the base because we have an output coupling capacitor, so we're going to block that DC. So now we need to look at R6 and R7, and then basically just do the same thing you did in stage one to figure out Q2's base voltage. Now for this one, go ahead if you need to and pause the video, and in a moment I'm going to put the answers up there. See if you can get it. Awesome, if you got anything close to these values, like within plus or minus 10%, then you did a great job. Now, same thing for stage three. Go ahead and take a moment, pause the video, do your calculations, and in a moment I'll put the answers up. If you're within plus or minus 10% of these values, excellent work. Always remember when doing these calculations, it's better to measure twice and cut once. Now the last thing is AV. Do you remember how I said to calculate the total AV? Go ahead and take a second. And if you forgot how to do it, remember, you just gotta multiply the AV of each stage together to get the total AV. If you got 1,346, you calculated correctly. And remember, I did not put any type of unit of measurement on the end of that AV. Otherwise, I'd be wrong. Alright, thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe for updates on future videos. Make sure you guys are regulating your time properly. Oh, and maintaining that constant DC, I mean, constant level of positivity. Because you still have a long way to go in Course 2. Oh, and keep being awesome. BMET out.